What's going on guys? Welcome back to JW Deep Sky. Today we're going to be going over how to build an intermediate level astrophotography rig with a one shot color camera, auto guiding, and auto focusing all controlled through the ASI Air mini astro computer. So the ASI Air Mini has four DC 12 volt outputs and four USB ports, and this is enough to power and control your entire rig. So this is my rig here. We have the Skywatcher Evolux 62ED, 62 millimeter doublet refractor telescope. We have my guide scope, which is the SV Boney 30 millimeter mini guide scope. We have the guide camera, which is the ZWO ASI 120mm mini guide camera. We have the dedicated astronomy one shot color camera, which is the ASI 533MC Pro. And we have the autofocuser here. And of course here is the ASI Air Mini. So first we can connect the dew heater and I just put it right around here. It wraps around a bunch of times. I previously had a dew heater that had a USB connection, but instead I bought one that has a DC 12 volt connection. That way I have enough ports to run all my gear. Next we can connect the guide camera to the ASI Air, which is just a USB-C to USB. And next we can connect the autofocuser. And next we can connect the power for our camera to the ASI Air so that it can control the cooling of the camera. And next we can connect our camera to the ASI Air via USB. Now so far that's three USB cables and two 12 volt connectors to the ASI Air. So the last thing to connect would be the mount. And so here we have the telescope fully assembled ready to go on the mount. And how we want to do that is put the mount in a position where you're comfortable putting the scope on. Slide it into the cradle like so. Screw it tight. So first you want to find a balance point in the right ascension axis, which is this way. So adjust the counterweight until the rig doesn't move one way or another. So right now we can see it's heavy on the telescope side. So let's, let's slide our counterweight down. Now it's a lot heavy on the counterweight side. And now that seems pretty well balanced. So now we want to balance it in declination. And as you can see, the camera side is extremely heavy. So that means we have to move the whole rig forward. Okay, now that seems fairly well balanced. And balance is very important if you want your guiding to be good. So when starting up the ASI Air, it's important to return your mount to the home position before you start it up. And that means just pointing it north and straight. So this is the Skywatcher EQM 35 Pro and to connect it to the ASI Air, all you need is a USB cable. So plug the square end into the USB port on the mount and just plug the USB end into the ASI Air. And so now we need power. So I have one 12 volt five amp DC adapter for the ASI Air and one 12 volt five amp DC adapter for my mount. And that's all the power you need. So this is what the ASI Air app looks like when you first start it up. So just hit enter device and this is what it brings you to. So this is basically the initial screen. You can hit refresh on the location info and it'll update your current location. Also, it should auto populate your mount, your main camera and your guide camera, but if not, you can select it from this drop down menu here. So then just hit enter and it brings us to the home screen. Also, side note, if you have an EQ mod mount, that is an EQM35 Pro, HEQ5, EQ6R Pro, etc. In order to connect it, you'll need to click on the mount icon and select EQ mod from the drop down here. Also, if you're connected via USB, which is the simplest way, uh, select serial and baud 115,200. And then you should be able to connect. Also, if you want to connect your ASI Air to your Wi-Fi, this will allow any device on that network to connect to the ASI Air. So all you have to do is hit the Wi-Fi tab on the top uh, and enable station mode and select your Wi-Fi from the drop-down. So next we can begin our polar alignment process. So select the polar alignment option from the drop-down on the home screen. Make sure your mount was started up in home position and hit play. And the mount will take a picture plate solve, rotate 60 degrees, plate solve again, and let you know exactly how far off your polar alignment is. Once it's calculated, you can hit let's go, and then we can begin adjusting. 
first hit the auto checkbox so that the camera continuously keeps taking pictures in order to plate solve as you refine your alignment. So keep adjusting until you see a happy face, then you know you're close. From here I like to get it close to one arc minute of error or less, but just get as close as you can. So now we can hit the constellation icon and this will bring up the planetarium. From here you can select different targets to go to. I ended up going to M13 for just a minute, just to autofocus, but in general you can autofocus in almost any area of the sky. So in order to autofocus, select focus from the home screen dropdown. Start taking pictures with the circle icon, 2 second exposures is fine. Then select the focuser box on the left. This will bring up focuser controls. Then select the AF box. This will bring up the autofocus window. Hit play and the autofocuser will work its magic. Plotting different focus points on a graph based on star size and then calculating the optimal focus point. So once you've selected a target, hit go to and your mount will slew to the target. Take a picture and plate solve to make sure you're dead on. If not, your mount will make a correction, plate solve again, and you should be good to go. So now we can start guiding. Hit guide on the left, then hit the graph that pops up. This will bring up the guiding screen. Then hit the looping icon. This will enable the guide camera to start taking pictures. Now you can hit the crosshair icon and the guiding calibration will begin. Once that's complete, it will automatically start guiding and you can set up your imaging sequence. So you have a couple of options for imaging in your home screen dropdown, auto run, plan, and live. With these modes you can set up things like exposure times, amount of images you want to take, and whether you want the sequence to automatically perform a meridian flip. I just chose the live stacking option. This will stack and further refine your image with each picture taken. I also make sure to select save every frame when stacking so that I have each individual frame for post-processing later on. So that's my general workflow in the ASI Air. Let me know if you have any questions about the whole process or my rig in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, clear skies.